guys. Uh, just want to say welcome to Adventures of Davio. Thank you if you're watching. Uh, thank you for the support. Hey, Facebook's actually blowing up at the moment. Um, you probably guessed where we are. Well, you probably think you know. And if you guessed the Little Blue Lake, you would be wrong. Uh, we're actually about 25, 30 kilometers away from the Little Blue Lake. And you want to do a project on the Little Blue Lake, you can't actually start it at the Little Blue Lake. That's why I brought you out here. But I'm getting way ahead of myself, so we're gonna just tone it way back. We're gonna start this video from scratch, so I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. Who needs a ute? Just have a car with seatbelts. Done. Have you come out here now? How many times have I dragged you out here? Including Three when times. we come out with Sean? Yeah, actually about twice. So there's one for Sean and then we went back again last week yeah. and then just this week. So it's like my fifth time out not doing this again. We are not coming to the northeast coast again for <laughs> weeks. this gate, we're going to go straight down following this dirt road and you'll come to a um, little white road I think it is. If you go to the left of that road that's going to take you to the um, old mining site and if you follow the white road that's going to take you to the dredge. Guys, so we've just arrived at quite a big mining site actually, old mining site. I apologise for the wind. Look over here. That is an old hopper. It's sort of like a big old school sluice and rocks actually sat just directly straight up there because there's a hole up there where this would go to so this is where they would have put the water through so on off closed at the moment and that would have sent the water through. Thanks, man. So that's what we're just looking at. And that would have sat just here. You can see that hole there. That's where that pipe is down there would have gone. And that hose I guess you could call it for the water we are set up here so as they come in and dug from up here I don't know big excavators or whatnot would have come along 
dozers, picked it up, dropped it in here by the bucket fall. And that thing there will basically stop any really big rocks and whatnot going through. And I'm guessing it'll all get passed through that pole or that pipe just down there. And that's basically the sluicing process. Guessing this is where the water comes from. See those bars welded here. They've just cut it straight off and put it down. I'm not really that keen to get in there and check it out though, so we're going to jump up here. This is just a huge mining site. All those concrete slabs where they would have had buildings and oh, goodness knows what. So whenever you talk to people and ask about why the Little Blue Lake is the colour that it is, everyone seems to have their own version of how it happened. It's basically pretty simple and that's why I chose to focus the video more around here and not so much at the Little Blue Lake. That's more the touristy hotspot. And don't get me wrong, it's great and it's beautiful, but I think to tell the story properly, you need to come all the way out here because this basically shows you that there's other really beautiful man-made aqua blue lakes around. So these ones are actually about 30 kilometers away from the touristy hotspot. And everyone seems to say, and it's all over the internet, that it's a natural phenomenon, the Little Blue Lake. It kind of is, but not really. It's very man-made to the point where the water was even pumped in by the miners after they'd finished up mining in that area. A lot of people think it was to create like a recreation ground. I think it was more to prevent people from actually going to the mine, from either continuing to mine or potentially hurting themselves. And I mean, it suggested that you don't swim in it. I mean, the reason for the color is yeah, it's got the white sort of rocky clay underneath it, which would be helping, which it's actually full of all the tin and other minerals and metals that have helped react with the colour. So you're potentially just, you're basically just swimming in contaminated water. That's why they suggest you don't actually swim in there. But I mean, people still do it. I just wouldn't recommend it. So just observe it from afar. Okay, so we come from up there. That's where the old hopper is or sluice box. And you basically just want to come straight up along this path. Just over there is probably the biggest blue lake. And you just follow this path all the way down and you'll come up to about there. And that's where the other three are. The other three are right next to each other and the biggest one's just over there. So basically what they do, back in the day they had teams of one or two people, I think they had about 25 or 30 that would actually go out and like pan mining to try and find a suitable spot to set up a bigger operation if it was you know, economically viable to actually do so. So that's obviously what happened here from all the mining that took place over there it's a huge area and they've actually set up the dredge around here as well the Dorset dredge which is massive I can't wait for you guys to see it and we're gonna go check that out now okay so to the left is where we were just filming the uh, little blue lake so if you want to get to that old mining site take the left dredge we're going straight up here with the white 
road. Okay, so if you keep riding up that uh, white path, about, let's say we're about two kilometers in, you're gonna come up to another boom gate. Forget that boom gate. You're gonna go to the left here. And you're gonna come up also to this sign. Dredge this way, no vehicles beyond this point. You can't get your vehicle in anyway, so it doesn't matter. Look at that. A long walk. That's why we bought bikes, because we come out here last week, actually ended up getting lost, which I'll show you how and where we got lost. I'll explain all that. Yeah, moral of the story, just listen to women. Basically. If you do find your way out here, just pay close attention to this sign. It's basically explaining to you that there's a soil-based disease that's affected this area called root rot or dieback. Just make sure that you wash your shoes off, uh, tires if you ride your push bike through here, just after you leave to save spreading it any further. Okay, so last week when we came out, this was the start of our demise for the day. So on the maps, it come up that we had to take an invisible road through there. There's no path there. There's a little bit of a clearance once you're actually going through. But yeah, the reason for it is because on the actual video, the YouTube video that I watched, there's one up and even on um, all the Google searches I put in, the uh, Dorset Dredge, it actually comes up that it's in the Black Duck Lagoon. It is not in the Black Duck Lagoon. It may have been at one stage and dredged its way to where it is now, but it's definitely not in there. So if you do come down here <coughs> to check out the dredge, stick to the path. Why didn't we stick to the path last time? Because you're following the maps. So we're following the maps. So yeah, don't listen to your maps. We we're coming on the path, on the right way, and then straight away we got turned right. And this is where we were. So we did, we turned right yeah. because of me. Don't listen to your maps, don't turn right. Don't listen to me. Don't listen. <laughs> so follow the path straight down and Oh, you'll get to the dredge. So we made it. This thing is insane. I... Wow. I wasn't expecting to do a reaction video within my own video but wow this thing is enormous it's actually raised my anxiety levels a bit I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about look at that so they're the actual buckets in there that actually did the dredging. I get on the other side. It's intimidating, I think. I think it's so minor. It's so minor play. It's massive. Okay, we're gonna try walk around the other side and just try to get the bikes under shelter because it looks like it's about to rain. And then uh, get some more more shots of it and explain a little bit more about it to you guys. So, so basically, all this roofing iron that you can see here, that lined 
all of this, it was all the walls for the dredge. So it was basically just big sections of it. All the walls, roof made out of this roofing iron. You can't see it now because it's all fallen. It's probably all in the lake. That's what it's made out of, just all this. And man, these guys had it tough mining. Like, it is no joke. They, they had to mine and work, rain, hail or shine, snow, freezing cold, doesn't matter. Mining back in the 19th and 20th century was no joke. It was tough. So just keep that in mind. If you're at your day job and you're having a hard day, feeling like crap, you know, I can definitely see why everyone thinks that our generation's gotten soft because, man, these guys had it tough. And it gets windy out here and it gets cold, really cold. And there's no excuse. These guys, these miners back in the day, Man, they barely made enough to actually feed their families and support their families, so it was really tough going. So Lorena's found a way over. Whereabouts did you cut through? Oh, up here a bit. Yeah, footprints. So it's actually a pretty well known spot by a few people. There's heaps of footprints in the ground everywhere here. We made it! Woo! <sighs> After last week. Oh my goodness. Just look at this thing, it is massive. We're gonna go around here and try to get a better shot. There's more of these pink markers. So someone's actually been nice enough really to set it out so that you can get to it and find your way back if you get lost. So just keep an eye out for those pink markers. And as you're walking through all this heavy bushland, just keep an eye out for water because we are near a river. You just have to be really careful where you tread. One minute, 37 seconds later. Oh my goodness, look at it. I made it. Wow. This is insane. We're gonna see if we can get on it. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend trying to jump up on this thing, just cause I don't want someone to try and end up getting hurt because I've suggested it. So I'd stay away from it if I was anyone else and uh, just observe it from a distance. But I'm gonna try to jump up on this thing, have a bit more of a look around, maybe Someone watching this will be satisfied with just what we're doing here. As you can see here, 
this would have been the winch that actually where is it there's a rope down you can see that there next to my bag that would have gone in these little grooves here and that's what actually would have moved the buckets along and yeah that would have been the winch fellow adventurette for this trip. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't, I don't think either. So we're thinking it's probably not the safest to go over there. Honestly, it's extremely rusted though. Yeah, doesn't look like there's really much to look at over there anyway. This thing really is just a skeleton of what it used to be. So this is basically, it honestly is, it's just a skeleton of what it used to be. I'll chuck some pictures up from how it looked back in its day and you wouldn't even recognize it's completely different. So basically the way this thing worked, it just dug its way around, really. So these big scoop-like buckets, basically on a massive conveyor belt, just constantly rotating and digging up soil from the lagoon's bank. Once the buckets were full, it was all lifted up over by a conveyor and tipped into a massive rotating screen. Water was constantly pumped in to help separate the tin and other heavy metals that basically fell through the screen into a separate room at the bottom of the dredge where it was basically called a sluicing room where it was all sorted and separated. All the rubbish and other crap basically just fell down this chute back into the lagoon where it was just digging from, so it's basically it. So you can see which way it landed. So when the floodwaters went up, this is obviously shifted and as it's gone back down, this side has landed on the embankment, so it's tilted a bit. And there's some pictures in here of it actually tilted. Over time, this thing's just gone right over. I don't think we're gonna be able to get over there. Best bet would be to climb down there and just go across. It looks easy enough. There actually seems to be a big gap there and there's nothing to hold on to going down. So just to be safe, I reckon we might give it a miss. So I'm just doing this on my phone because I didn't want to cart the big camera over. But basically, 
there's a gap that we're dealing with that's stopping us from getting over there. We're not going to do it because that's on a pretty significant lean. And there's actually nothing to hold on to there. Now the dredging buckets are just there, but I don't want to fall in there. Just about four meters, I can't swim. Lorena has a fear of dirty water and doesn't want to jump in to save me, so I'd be stuffed. But yeah, it's probably as close as we're going to get to this big, beautiful beast. It's just crazy. Like I said, it's honestly not worth it. Like, I love doing adventures and exploring stuff like this. Like, this is me and my element. I'm absolutely loving this, but not when it's at risk of hurting myself or other people. And I've got uh, someone else with me to help look after as well. So, it's about as close as we're going to get to it. It's a bit of a mission, even just to get to here, but jump back over and probably head off soon I reckon. Yo, this thing is literally like a roller coaster. <laughs> like a roller coaster ride. Just to give an idea on how big these buckets actually are. It's actually huge. I'm sitting here quite funky. I don't want to sit down because it's wet. These buckets are huge. Dave size buckets. <laughs> last time I sat down last weekend, I sat on prickle bush. Prickles in my butt. No, I don't want to be a wet butt. Okay. Uh, next thing is just see this is just um, Disneyland. Yeah, you can see a light hanging. And then there's no light going on, but it's a light, whether or not it's the one. Oh, I see. Oh, it's like a little wind tunnel. It's a light there. Rusty it is. Probably break through if we walked on that. Oh, hell yeah. Look how thin it is there, too. Yeah, not that big. So we probably wouldn't have. Buckets must have come up through here. Buckets would have come up through here. This is hard trying to imagine it because it's on the side. So yeah. This is the top. This is the bottom. This was. This is the bottom. Yep. Oh, look, the other bit's the top. Nah, this whole bit up there is the bottom. That was underwater. This bit. So this whole bit was underwater because the buckets were in here. So this is where the buckets were doing the actual dredging. So the buckets ran along the top and would come back up under here. Hang on. Yeah, they would have gone this way. So the buckets are facing that way. They would have gone under here, dug it all up, and then lifted it up over the top to go through the sluicing yeah. tunnel, I guess, to separate all the minerals and tin and whatnot. So this was all underwater. Huh. And that other bit on the side we are just looking at would have been where all the workers were. Pretty sure these guys employed like, I think it was a good 30, 40 people that worked on this rig, on this dredge. That's a lot. And they, that many people working here though. Buckets are huge. I don't know if they all did it at like, work the exact same time or not, but they employed that many people. And no women. There was only one office lady, apparently. Okay, so, unfortunately this thing didn't operate without having an incident. Uh, there was a boy who worked on the rig and he was changing a light globe one night because it was getting on dark. I mean, this thing ran 24 hours a day, right? And he was changing a light globe and he was leaning over. I believe it was up this end because it was with the buckets and he actually fell over the edge as he was trying to change the light globe and landed on the buckets and these things are like these are solid he actually landed on one of the buckets 
his father saw it and was able to put a stop to the whole buckets moving but yeah unfortunately he was taken to hospital and lasted I think a day after he arrived before he um, passed away from his injuries so really sad news but you know that's just how it was back then they didn't have I guess all the safety regulations and stuff that we have in place now and that's why we do today because of you know instance instances like that that could be avoided so incidents so yeah This thing is sick and crazy, and I'm still a bit overwhelmed, but this is it. This is the little bit of abandon that we had in this touristy video, so bummed that we couldn't get over there and actually check it out on site, but we actually got a lot closer than I expected to, so hopefully you guys enjoy it, and wow, this is crazy. If you do come here though, be respectful and just, you know, like we did don't ruin it don't come up and spray paint it and do all that sort of crap just come and look at it it's beautiful the way it is just let it just let it be it's had a rough mind right so all right guys if you made it this far thank you you've made it to the end of the video um the support has honestly been just great and overwhelming so all my friends and family, the crew at IFP, thank you all so much. Um, I'm sorry it's taken so long to get this video out. I do work full time and it's really tough going out there and actually filming, editing everything. That's so. That's why I have Lorena. Big shout out to you too, girl. Uh, she is a massive help with actually keeping my head level while we're out filming because it's not as easy as it looks once it's all put together and you're watching the video and even editing she has a massive help with all that process and whatnot so massive shout out to her um i want to give a shout out to joshy and the boys in the kingsway barber these guys are always looking after me with a great cut making me look my best so if you're in and around monceston definitely run in and see the boys and get a great cut um, last but not least, lovers of lunatics, man, these guys have been dressing me now for about three years and actually sent me out limited edition extended crackhead skull tea and that's great. There was like 70 of them made, so absolutely wrapped to get my hands on one. So chuck a link in the description below, go over, check out the webpage, they do female and male clothing and yeah, I just want to say... Again, thank you for the support and I was a little bit vague with my instructions on how to actually get to the mines and the dredge. I did that on purpose to hopefully deter anyone with ill intentions to go out there. I'm not about vandalising or looting at any of these places I go to, so hopefully anyone that actually wants to go out will do the research they need to do and find it.